I study the lines in my hand, like roots, like roots, and wait for the poem to happen. Where are our voices? Root words. 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 Where are our voices allowed? New Beacon Books. First Caribbean bookshop that there was in this country. So Art on the Underground and the Community Space at Risk team gave me the invitation to work on the project. Um, at the time, the project was to collaborate with uh, some of the community spaces on the register. Finding New Beacon Books on the register and, and because I already had a connection and always wanted to work with them, uh, we approached them to see if they'd be uh, open to collaborating on the project. So the books and the texts um, really re responded to my questioning of what should I do, you know? Um, and uh, I proposed to make a work that uses the voices in congregations from the texts, these poets, um, and their words and their poems and brings them into collaboration in that same multivocal, polyvocal way. Um, and that I will ask the spaces or the people that support the spaces that are on the register, uh, the register to um, speak the poems aloud. Kamau Brathwaite's History of the Voice. The oral tradition, on the other hand, demands not only the grill, but the audience to complete the community. The noise and sounds that the maker makes are responded to by the audience and are returned to him. I come from a Caribbean culture and my session. So my, uh, my background and my upbringing had a lot of sound within it because I, you know, my brother was an event producer. We had a sound system at home. I always say I slept amongst the speakers. So to put voices and sound within my work became a really integral part of like finding my voice within the art space. Recording. Group words. Where are our voices allowed? A new sound work by Shanice Aretha in collaboration with New Vegan Books. I shall write a plan to understand in my heart, which shall not be put out. By Lorna Goodison. I shall light a candle of understanding, seize the training of impossible hedges round this life. For as fast as you slow them, serendipitous thickets will appear and outgrow them. I shall light a candle of understanding in thy heart. Um, and I was just so glad that people were willing to lend their voice to the project and also lend their voice to speaking and telling the stories of their spaces. New Beacon Books is one of the foundations upon which African Caribbean culture has been built in Britain. As one of the bookshops established in the 1960s, along with Bogle Overture and later I think grassroots storefront, for example. These bookshops, and John LaRose was at the forefront of this, was seminal to the movement for education. And of course, it's linked to books, right? The Saturday school movement, the black teach parents movement, and black parents and teachers, because a lot of teachers were involved as well, and cultural people like myself. We found a sort of role um, which gave value to our own work as artists in the context of establishing a community or helping to defend a community, not only establishing but defend the community. Rumi's Cave is a really special space for me. It's somewhere, I think probably the first place where I was able to get on stage and feel welcomed and supported and uh, experimental. Like I felt like I could try something new um, and I wouldn't be heckled. <laughs> um, and it's just really a welcoming space for a lot of people. 
and now I've progressed with my relationship with them and I'm hosting an open mic night on a regular basis for them and it's just I'm constantly inspired by the people who come through and share space with us and share their work in all sorts of different forms um, in storytelling, in poetry, in comedy, in music um, and it's just it's just great to see a new surprise every time. With the loss of community spaces is where you've, we've realised how important it is to people. For people to find somewhere that they can celebrate birthdays, where they can remember people uh, when they've passed away, where they can uh, go to educate themselves for something that is you know, not normal school, like you know, all the different things that people can share. And I think the whole point is that people do want a space to gather. That's what we want. We want a permanent space where people um, can use it for whatever it is that they need um, and that it won't disappear. The record shop is open to every eye. The record shop for creativity, spread knowledge. The record shop creates a community. The record shop and it's inspirational. What inspired me to set up the record shop was just feeling like there was a lack of opportunities for young musicians. So I wanted to create a platform to enable them to access music without any financial barriers. But then when I see like the progression that we make, like being the centre for like work experience and young people just coming here for like drop-in sessions, I just also like worry about like if we're no longer able to continue um, how it would impact the young people, as well as when something is so like great, this community space bringing people together is also concerning that why isn't there enough support to keep these things going because they're so important and I know multiple other community spaces as even when I was young I took part in a lot of them as well. So I just feel that there needs to be a lot more support just to keep them going. Study the lines in my hand, like roots, like roots, like roots, and wait for the poem to happen. Thank you for joining us for the launch of Root Words, Where Our Voices Are Loud. I grew up really close to here. I went to school at Highbury Field School, which is just up the road. And it's just a beautiful thing to make art that is going to be seen by the people I went to school with, by my family, by my friends, by my local community. The work um, that we made for the underground is a sound piece which you can listen to using uh, a QR code and you can take it underground with you, you can take it home with you. So today, without further ado, I will let the poet speak because that's what the work does. The weary man said only yesterday, any number played, but this is serious now. This tall black woman, curious to the seeing eye, carries her ancient primal power within her, under the wrapping of her head, still as a pool, readies itself for anger. In Nima, I stand by the coconut cart, lips to its open eye. They don't have straws like they do in Osu, Oxford Street. A road as congested as London Oxford Street where a coconut is a £6.50 event <laughs> marked with a selfie pouting African lips for the gram. Quarterly, the whole family gathers on the living room floor. The men sit on wooden chairs worn with ritual, jungle fowl feather headdress, collarbones smeared in hand blood, Goat skin drums between thighs, sons at their feet. Okay. Thank you again for coming. Root words. Root words. Root words. Root words. Root words. Where are, Where are our voices allowed? 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 Where are our voices allowed?
Where are our voices allowed? <laughs>